Hi. A couple of videos ago, we discussed LearnTF mod. And we listed a couple of things that are required for this mod. The most important is, of course, Matrix A, uh, uh, which is uh, simply called input coefficient matrix. Okay, from, from input coefficient matrix, we were getting information how much uh, of a dollar's worth of uh, output of a given industry is used as an input in another industry, right? Now, based on that, we were able to actually calculate levels of output of all the goods, of course, assuming that we can the vector of final demands and this uh, and this uh, these levels of productions of each industry we were putting inside vector x vector of production levels that to actually calculate uh, calculate these production levels we need to use we need to solve this equation and i minus a was called a long tf matrix Now, having, uh, uh, having calculated Lamontian matrix, the solution, so vector of solution, vector of levels of production, is given by I minus A inverted times vector of final demands D. Okay, but look, the coefficients given in input coefficient matrix are technical, which means that in order to produce certain goods, you need to have certain amounts of very specific, uh, uh, very specific uh, inputs, right? So they do not change that much, right? Of course, if you have some uh, improvements in technology, they would change, but they are relatively stable over time. But the situation is very different with final demands, right? People very often, customers change their, uh, 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 their preferences, uh, uh, and a vector of final demands can change quite Frequently. So, how can we actually see what is going to happen to the levels of production in different sectors of the economy as final demands for different goods are changing? Well, this is actually a very easy task because, again, we can use comparative statics, and as you will learn over here, this leads to tremendously easy solutions. Okay, but let's do it step by step. Okay, so let's say that we have calculated already inverted matrix A, uh, uh, along here matrix. And let's just say we're going to denote it by V. Now, let's go back to our example when uh, we've dealt with three goods. So this vector is three by one, this vector is, this matrix is three by three, 
and this vector is given through by one. Okay, so let's say that each element of inverted uh, motive matrix V is given by V11, V12, V13, V21, V22, V23, V31, V32, V33. Okay, and let's just see that we've calculated. Okay, look what happens when we actually substitute this solution over here, right? The vector, so what we're going to do now is that we're going to take vector v and we multiply it by vector of final demands d, right? So we will have v11, v2, v31, v12, v13, v22, v23, v32, v33 times vector of final demands d1, d2, d3. Okay, now all we gotta do is to multiply. But look, multiplying those is a tr trivial thing to do because we're gonna get that x1, so level of production, well, let me just write it like this, of good 1, of good 2, and of good 3, V11 D1 plus V12 D2 plus V13 D3. Okay, then we've got V21 D1 plus V22 D2 plus V23 D3. Three, and finally V31, D1, V32, D2 plus V33, D3. And look, this is our vector of solutions. Here we have, here we have actually what happens to the, uh, here we have levels of production of each of these three bits. So look, now, if I, for example, want to know what happens to level of production of good one, right? Because we talk about equilibrium uh, level of production. If, for example, uh, if, for example, uh, demand for good two is going up. Well, this is relatively easy thing to do, right? This is the expression for the level of production of good one. And look, if I calculate partial derivative with respect to demand for good two, it is really easy thing to do because look, this is a linear function. I get the answer that this is V one, two. Huh, so what if I want to know what happens to the level of production of good three if the demand for good 3 goes up well, again, here we've got the level of production of good 3 we differentiate this with respect to D3 so we've got V 3, 3 well, okay, but if this is so easy maybe there is a more compact way of, do, of going about it. Okay, so if I would like to, for example, now differentiate the full vector, 
So look, we will have here one, two, three levels of production. You see, there is no subscript one, two, or three, because we talk about this entire thing, right? So I want to know what happens to the levels of production of all these three goods if, for example, V1, so demand, final demand for good one increases, well, definitely our solution is also going to be a vector. But I hope you can see that we will be able to find it quite easily, right? I differentiate the first expression with respect to D1, I get V11, then with this second expression, I get V21, and the third one, V31. Oh, that was easy. What if I'm going to do this with respect to vector D2? Well, again, it's relatively easy thing to do. We will have V12, V22, and V. A three, two. Okay, so we can clearly see that if I'm gonna now differentiate this with respect to D3, all I need to have is to put those coefficients V1, 3, V2, 3, V3, 3. three. And look, what we are actually doing now is we differentiate matrices. Of course, in this case, it's not that complicated, right? Because the, the derivatives are extremely easy to calculate. But this should give you an idea of how we can actually go forward with this. Because look, what have I done over here? Here, I differentiated one specific value with a, a, a level of production with respect to one specific final demand, and the same here. What have I done over here? I've taken the entire vector of levels of production and I differentiated it with respect to demand for good one, good two, and good three. So why not just do all of it at once? I would well, why not just differentiate entire entire vector of levels of production with the entire vector of final demand? And I hope you can see where am I going with this. Because look, the solution here is extremely easy. All I have to do is just take these three columns and put them next to each other. So we will have V11, V21, V31, V12, V22, V32, uh, V13, V23, V33. So what did we get? that actually inverted loyalty of matrix, right? Because this is what we have. This is the entire vector V, but our entire vector V is nothing more than inverted loyalty of matrix. It is, contains all comparative static derivatives in this system. So based on entries inside this matrix, we actually are getting comparative static derivatives of levels of production in the model with respect to final demand for those goods. Okay, so look, as it turns out, once you actually solve the model, in a way that you are, you found inverted matrix 
long chain matrix, you already have all comparative static derivatives, so you don't need to calculate them. Well, this is one of those things that is better, uh, uh, better practice than just explain, but you will practice it during the workshop. But look, what are, you, what are we getting here? This entry over here is simply telling us what will happen to the level of production of good one if demand, final demand for good two increases. What do we have over here? What will happen to the level of production of good two if final demand for good three increases? Okay, and what we have, uh, let's just say over here, what will happen to the level of production of good 2 if demand for good 2 increases? Okay, so this is it about comparative statics in long TF model. In the ne next week, we're gonna start something a little bit different. So, take care and thank you for your attention.